John Landau here from New Zealand. Whether it be a two column newspaper story, a 14 line sonnet, a 20 page short story, a 320 page novel, a 600 page recounting of history or something else, literacy plays a vital role, not only in shaping who we are as individuals, but also helps us become more socially engaged citizens. This week at Coral Shores High School, it's Celebrate Literacy Week. To honor that celebration, I thought I would share with you an excerpt, not from a notable novel or a memorable poem, but instead from a 156 page movie script. Titanic, written by James Cameron. Blackness, then two faint lights appear close together, growing brighter. They resolve into two deep submersibles, free falling towards us like express elevators. One is ahead of the other and passes close enough to fill frame, looking like a giant spacecraft blazing with lights, bristling with insectile manipulators. Tilting down to follow it as it descends away from the limitless blackness below. Soon, they are fireflies, then stars, then gone. Cut to exterior, Mirror One. Pushing in on the falling submersible called Mirror One, right up to its circular viewport to see the occupants. Inside, it is a cramped seven foot sphere, crammed with equipment. Anatoly Mekalevich, the sub's pilot, sits hunched over his controls, singing softly in Russian. Next to him, on one side, is Brock Lovett. He's in his late 40s, deeply tanned, and likes to wear a Nomex suit, unzipped to show the gold from the shipwrecks covering his gray hair. He is wily, fast-talking treasure hunter, a salvaged superstar who is part historian, part adventurer, and part vacuum cleaner salesperson. Right now, he is propped up against the CO2 scrubber, fast asleep and snoring. Cut to exterior ocean bottom, a pale, dead flat lunar landscape. It gets brighter from the light above as Mirror One enters frame and drops to the seafloor in its downblast from its thrusters. It hits bottom after its two and a half hour free fall with a loud bonk. Interior Mirror One. Lovett and Bodine jerk awake at the landing. Anatoly, heavy Russian. We are here. Exterior Mirror One and Two. Minutes later, the two subs skim over the sea floor to the sound of side scan sonar and the thrum of its big tr thrusters. The featureless gray clay at the bottom unrolls in the light of the subs. Bodine is watching the side scan sonar display where the outline of a huge pointed object is visible. Anatoly lies prone, driving the sub, his face pressed against the center port. Bodine, come left a little. She's right in front of us, 18 meters, 15, 13. You should see it. Anatoly, do you see it? I don't see it. There, and out of the darkness, like a ghostly apparition, the bow of a ship appears. Its knife edge prow is coming straight at us, seeming to plow the bottom sediment like an ocean wave. It towers above the seafloor, standing just as it landed 84 years ago. The Titanic, or what's left of her. Mirror One goes up and over the bow railing. It's intact, except for an overgrowth of rusticles draping it like mutated Spanish moth. Tight on the eyepiece of a monitor of a video camcorder, Brock Lovett's face fills the frame in black and white. Brock, it still gets me every time to see the sad rune of the great ship sitting here where she landed at 2.30 in the morning, April 15th, 1912, after her long fall from the world above. Fade to black. Thank you and wishing everybody in the Keys all the best.